Hi everyone, in this video, we are going to discuss systematic literature review. Systematic literature review, number of reviewers had asked me question and they had contacted me regarding this systematic literature review. So here is in this video, this is the just a part one. I'm going to explain you what is systematic literature review and what is the difference among all sort of reviews, those we are doing practicing. But in the next video, I'm going to discuss Prisma. That is one of the important technique through which you have to go for systematic literature review. And uh, Prisma, I'm going to explain you in the next video. So here is systematic literature review when we talk about uh, it is uh, one of the important type of review that uh, repeatable analytical methods to collect secondary data and analyze it. So basically, it is a review, is, it is a type of evidence synthesis which formulate research questions and are broad or narrow in scope and identify and synthesize data that directly relate to the systematic review questions. As I had already explained here, uh, a simple flowchart, generalized flowchart I had created here. Here is check for existing review protocols, then formulate a specific questions, then develop and register your protocol, design your search strategy, conduct your literature search, select and critically apprise studies, extract and synthesis data and interpret and present findings. So in that way, this could be a one of the flow diagram through which you can run. So next is, while some people might associate systematic review with meta-analysis, there is a lot of queries I have received. What is the difference between systematic review and meta-analysis? So these both these concepts are entirely different. So there are multiple kinds of reviews which can be defined as systematic review, systematic, which do not involve a meta-analysis. If we will use term systematic only, so it doesn't mean we are doing meta-analysis. So meta-analysis is something different. And systematic reviews are often designed to provide an exhaustive summary of current evidence relevant to a search research questions. And uh, you can see here, there are the total number of the four phases, planning, search, analysis, and reporting. What we are doing in planning, defining review objectives, developing coding schemes, and search means electronic search or manual search. It depends on you whether you are searching on any sort of database like Web of Science or Scopus, it depends on you or manually you are searching. And after that, you are doing analysis, reviewing and coding. And after that, you are analyzing. And finally, you are reporting all these things as a summary and the or the organization of findings. Here is we can see I had just tried to explain you what are the various types of systematic reviews are basically, I mean, there's the 30 types of systematic review, but I have chosen some systematic review, those are relevant. And uh, I could be focused on this one is mapping review. So mapping review, that means it maps existing literature and categorize data. The data categorizes quantity and quality of the literature. And it includes by study design and other features. So mapping review can be used to identify the need for primary and secondary research. But as I said earlier, when we talk about meta-analysis, a meta-analysis is a statistical analysis that combines the results of multiple quantitative studies. We are not, and this one, using statistical methods, results are combined to provide evidence from multiple studies. One of the very important term that is rapid review and at the time of COVID-19, we have seen this COVID-19 pandemic. 
we had used this kind of review, rapid reviews. So an assessment of what is already known about a policy or practice issue, which uses systematic review methods to search for and critically apprise existing research and rapid reviews are still uh, again systematic review However, part of the process may be simplified or omitted in order to increase rapidity. And uh, when we come to this term systematic review, a uh, systematic search for data using a repeatable method and includes appraising the data, for example, the quality of the data and a synthesis of research data. But when we talk about systematic search and review, that is entirely different. Means combines methods from a critical review with a comprehensive search process. And this review type is usually used to address broad questions to produce the most appropriate evidence synthesis. This method may or may not include quality assessment of data sources. But when we talk about mixed methods review, refer to any combination of methods where one significant stage is a literature review, often systematic. It can also refer to a combination of review approaches such as combining quantitative with qualitative research. Next, we come to the uh, most important asked question, Scoping review and systematic review is the same. I said, no, it's not same. Scoping review, when we talk about scoping review, that means it's often be a preliminary stage before a systematic review. It is before that, which scopes out an area of inquiry and maps the language and key concepts to determine if a systematic review is possible or appropriate or to lay the groundwork for a full systematic review. So the goal can be assessed how much data or evidence is available regarding a certain area of interest. Suppose we talk about some kinds of the keywords, those are available only in Hindi literature. Those are not available as a English. So we have to first identify, right, what kind of, before systematic literature review, we have to identify what kind of language that would be available most. And here is, you can see confidence. Here is narrative review, quick scoping review, rapid evidence assessment, and full systematic review. So before that, we can see at this stage, scoping review, right? You can see here. So that means it is much, much prior than that systematic review. So I'm sure this part must be clear, but when we talk about these stages of the scoping review, so there are total five stages we had identified according to the framework. I mean, sorry, this, these are not five. These are not six. These are the five, right? These are the five stages. Here is identifying the research questions, first of all, then identifying relevant studies, then identifying, then we are going to selecting studies relevant studies, then after the selecting relevant studies, then charting the data, right, present the information around key areas. And uh, at this stage, with the establishment of inclusion, exclusion criteria based on the familiarity with the literature. And after that, fifth one is collating, summarizing, and reporting the result, right? So collating, summarizing, and reporting the result, that provides both a descriptive and numerical summary of the data and a thematic analysis. So that's all for today. And uh, I'm sure this video would be helpful to you. And definitely we are going to, in the next video, Prisma, because Prisma technique is very, very important for systematic literature review. Thank you. Keep watching.